Hello and welcome to Middle East Now. I'm Laura Sellier. For the next hour, we'll bring you all the latest from the region, plus in-depth reports and analysis. First, though, the headlines. Chaos and bloodshed on the streets of Beirut. Six shot dead and dozens wounded as a Hezbollah protest over the probe into the port explosion turns deadly. The Taliban continues its push for diplomatic recognition. A high-level delegation arrives in Turkey to talk trade and humanitarian aid. It follows last week's meeting in Qatar. And the first meeting of its kind. Officials from Israel hold talks in the UAE with six Arab countries, including Egypt, Jordan, Morocco and Sudan. We begin with gunfire and chaos on the streets of Beirut this Thursday. At least six people were shot dead and dozens wounded after supporters of Hezbollah took to the streets to protest against an investigation into last month's port explosion. Well, members of Hezbollah claim they were shot at by snipers on rooftops. Clashes between rival groups then raged for several hours. Earlier, I spoke to a Beirut-based journalist who was asked to remain anonymous. Here he is explaining the situation in Beirut just a short while ago. Uh, the situation right now in Beirut is very tense. Despite the ceasefires every half an hour, since 11 a.m. Beirut time this morning, there are heavy clashes by snipers, uh, machine guns, uh, rocket fires on basically at the green line, the old green line separating East and West Beirut that used to separate the city during the 15 year civil war. It's a few hundred meters away from us right now. There's a heavy army presence, but there are also fighters everywhere. But most of the fighters we are seeing, we are identifying are Hezbollah fighters or their allies in the ML movement who took part in this morning's rally towards the Justice Palace, uh, which is nearby the old Green Line. Children who were attending school have been stranded in their classrooms in a humiliating manner since this morning because the schools decided to remain open despite the threats that this rally could pose in this neighborhood. It is a very sensitive neighborhood of Beirut. Everybody who knows the civil war, everybody who remembers the civil war is not surprised today to see these events unfolding. The rally was called by Hezbollah and the ML movement for their rejection of the ongoing investigation into the port of Beirut explosion of 2020. The rally started around 10 protesters mm -hmm. gathered at the Justice Palace, mainly peacefully in the beginning at 10.30, but around 11, as hundreds of men angered, angry at the judge investigating the port explosion, started approaching the Justice Palace. They went into the vicinity. They went into different neighborhoods that are very, very unfriendly zones for Hezbollah protesters and Amal movement protesters. Once they got there, they started clashes with Residents attacked their vehicles, attacked their buildings. That this situation ensued by exchange of stones, um, live clashes, and then in a minute there was shooting. And the shooting, until this point, we do not know where it came from. What we saw is protesters starting to run for cover and then quickly returned, heavily armed shooting back mercilessly towards the buildings, towards the army, sometimes sta standing very close to the army, but nevertheless shooting towards the buildings. That developed into open clashes in the streets. One side is probably shooting from the adjacent buildings from the east of the mm -hmm. old green line, the others from the west of the old green line towards the airport road of Beirut. At the moment, there are heavy casualties, heavy casualties in major hospitals in the city. At least 
five people killed and heavy damages at the shops, at the restaurants, at the residential buildings in the area of the Justice Palace towards the Green Line. This is the situation right now. There is a very uncertain ceasefire at the moment in certain areas, but I've been hearing of reports that more armed personnel, especially of Hezbollah, are heading towards Beirut to continue this fight. Well, I went on to ask the journalist about why the tensions in Lebanon have reached this point. Here's what he had to say. This is happening today because Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah decided that the investigation led by Judge Tariq Bitar, who is, who is the judge who succeeded the former judge Fadi Sawan, is not credible and is unethical. What the leader of Hezbollah said, that this judge cannot continue his investigation and should be replaced and be removed, is just a pretext for what we are seeing today in the clashes in Beirut. The former judge, Fadi Sawan, was, was removed earlier in the year uh, by, by, by the judiciary, despite the fact that there were no reports whatsoever that he was doing anything wrong. And he, uh, and he was replaced, and Judge Tariq Bitar took over the investigation. Now Hezbollah is saying yet again, this judge cannot continue as well. A few days ago, Hezbollah leader issued an ultimatum to the government that this judge should be removed. Hezbollah doesn't, does not care which judge is investigating the, the Beirut port explosion, whether it's Sawan or it's Bitar. Hezbollah does not want an investigation into the port of Beirut explosion of August 4, 2020. That is what we are seeing for the past few months, the obstruction, the, the, the measures being taken, some of them legitimate measures, judicial measures being filed against the judge, and in legal ways, yet again, these measures were discussed by the judiciary and refused, were refused. So the judge is still in power to continue its probe into the port explosion of 2020. Hezbollah leader said, if you refuse to remove the judge, or if you do not find a way to, re to remove the judge, we will take action in the street. And this is what happened this morning. What will happen now depends on the government, what the government decides to do, whether they stand by the, ju the judiciary, depends on the separation of powers. They cannot intervene in the justice's work. If there is no justice, there won't be a nation left. There won't be a Lebanon left. Mm -hmm. uh, the, wh whether the fabric or the, sec the sectarian fabric stands today in Lebanon or not, it doesn't matter if justice won't be served for more than 220 people killed in the Beirut port explosion. So today, whether the constitution is applied or not rests on key figures, primarily the president of Lebanon, the prime minister of Lebanon, and the parliament. The parliament uh, is not entirely controlled by Hezbollah, but Hezbollah has a lot of mm -hmm. influence on the Lebanese government. Let us see what they can do. We cannot predict what will happen in the next few days, but the, the people, the Lebanese people are adamant that they want to stand by the judge and they want to continue to help and support this judge in his investigation into the Beirut port explosion.